This program is made possible in part by a grant from Arkansas Historic Preservation Program, an agency of the Department of Arkansas Heritage. picnic in cemeteries. Um, well, for me, a, a picnic in a cemetery is my favorite thing. And in fact, on my birthday, I usually try to make sure I have a picnic in a cemetery. Um, I love cemeteries since I was a kid. And my grandfather, who was the um, bookkeeper and grounds, well, he, he would stake the graves for the West Salem, Illinois Cemetery. He was the one who kept the records, uh, kept the finances. And he would go there with me. We'd walk over there. And he would tell me stories. He would say, that stone over there, which is the nicest one, the cemetery, was the, the monument dealer in town. He, somebody ordered it and wouldn't pay for it, so he had it recarved and he kept it for himself. Um, he showed me his mother's grave. His mother died when he was very young, and he remembered that she was buried in a whole new section because her section was full and how sad he was. And I think it wasn't just the family stories. He was trying to impart genealogy. But what I was getting was, there are wonderful stories, mysteries to be solved, beautiful things to look at. I used to go there and read inscriptions, and then I would go back to Grandpa's ledgers and find out how the person died. So when I came to Arkansas, I was always looking at cemeteries. I wasn't collecting pictures of stones. I was just going to visit them. I loved them. And then at some point, I got started looking at the lambs in cemeteries. There was this enormous diversity. And there were lambs that don't look like lambs. They look like hedgehogs. They look like pigs. They look like cats. They look like sock puppets. Maybe the carver had never seen a lamb. And I started photographing them. And then that got me out into these very isolated cemeteries. And then I would see stones, again, I didn't understand. A, a symbol, um, an epitaph, an enigmatic statement on someone's stone hinting at how they died. And then more and more I'm finding myself not just photographing the stones, but looking for the stories behind them, whether it's biography, Arkansas history, a murder, um, a person's life that had some, something unique about it that was reflected on their tombstone. Then I started finding the names of the carvers hidden down at the bottom, like a little hidden puzzle. The stones would sink below ground level and that carver's signature might, be dis might, might have disappeared, but it might still be there. And that opened up another whole world the symbolism on tombstones. What do clasping hands mean on a stone? A pointing finger, a lamb, a dove, a willow. And it goes on and on and on. I don't, think there, I don't think there's an end in sight. I think I could do this all my life and still find things to intrigue me out there that I'd still want to know about. When I get up in the morning, I don't always plan to go to a cemetery. I mean, it's, um, 
If, if the light, I think it depends on if the light's going to be good that day. If it's going to be a sunny day and it's a cemetery I can get to about noon because then the light will be hitting the stones, the old stones face west. So if I'm there by noon and I can get that light on the stones and from then until mid-afternoon, I can start um, taking photographs. So either I'm going to a cemetery where I've been before but I didn't get some crucial thing, I missed it the first time and I think, ah, oh, I want to know what's you know, what the rest of that epitaph was, or I've been told of a cemetery in an area that I've been before, and someone's given me directions and said, oh, you missed a good one, you need to go back to such and such, or did you ever see that stone that gave the cause of death? And I'm collecting those. So then I'll pack lunch and I'll head out. That I'm done with. These I'm taking. I have my maps in the car. I guess that'll do it. So today should be a good day because it's good weather and the cemeteries, uh, it's a weekday, very unlikely that anybody is going to be out there competing for space and if they are it wouldn't matter because there's a lot of land, a lot of ground. This is the A.G. Family Cemetery, and we're at the town of Hasty, and this graveyard is back through a cow pasture. The fence and the over, the eagle, the name was all put up here by the A.G. Family, but now the town of Hasty claims it is their cemetery. It's the A.G. Family grave houses that make this, to me, really spectacular. But these two grave houses were made by the A.G. family for children who died very young. And what's lovely about this is the family has posted the history of the grave houses in the window, including a photograph of what they look like when they were first built. And what's wonderful about this grave house, I mean, one, there's so few examples left, but secondly, that it's such a uh, ornate, such a detailed version. I mean, all of this uh, woodworking, um, when I first found these and, and got a hold of the A.G. family, I was able to contact members of the family. Uh, Frank A.G. was the one who gave me this information, and he even sent me pictures of how the family came back every few years to do restoration. You know, obviously this is a brand new roof. This is not uh, the shingle or the, the shake roof that would have been on here. But he told me that when these pickets would rot out, they would replace them with exact copies. So they were keeping this as close to the original as possible. And the photo on the front, which is a little hard to see, but it does show, and this would have been taken about 1914 or soon after the houses were finished. This is what they look like when they were new. And except for the two-tone paint job, they're really very, very close to the originals. I think the only thing that's, that has changed would be the way they were painted. And those little finials, the little sh human shape, head, neck, shoulders, that was in the original grave houses. It is a, an Ozark tradition to do tombstones in that shape. So it's possible that was why it was done. Every so often, I guess the glass does get broken out and the family's replaced it. But you can see Guffrey's, uh, Guffrey's stone, which is very unusual. It's got oak leaves at the top. Little, little columns on the sides. When I interviewed Frank and he talked about William Christian, he said that um, I guess the man was widowed and building these grave houses was an act of love for his grandchildren. And that his son would drop him off here with his little bag of tools. And these were made with very simple tools, just hand tools. And that he is a labor of love. And they're unique, as far as I know, because they're still standing and wooden grave houses that weren't maintained, weren't kept up over the years, uh, tended, to, tended to rot away. And pretty soon gravity and the elements and cows getting in and uh, what have you would just level them. So to have ones that are intact, yeah, it's just a kind of a miracle.
this is the Carver Cemetery. I believe there was a community here, there was a town, I think there was a general store up on the turnoff. I just find it kind of appropriate that the name Carver kind of reminds me of tombstone carving and what I want to show you is like one of the most amazing pieces of carving I've ever seen. And one of the most amazing pieces of folk art. We're here to see the stone for a man named William Mayberry. And I was extremely blessed to meet a lady named Lois McCutcheon and her daughter Donna Dodson who told me about this stone because I was looking for tombstone lambs. And they said that Mr. Mayberry carved his own tombstone. And Lois, uh, Lois and Donna actually came here with me and they told me the story of this lamb. Um, Mr. Mayberry was a tombstone carver. Get this out of here if you can see it better. Um, and he carved some of the other stones in the cemetery, although he didn't sign his work as far as I can tell. But he made this lamb for somebody else and he spent a lot of time on it. And either they couldn't afford it or declined to pay or change their mind. And he decided to keep it for himself. And Lois said that as a little girl, uh, she remembered seeing this up, I think, on his porch or on his property and had seen him work on it. He was called Uncle Bill Mayberry. And I believe he must have done his own lettering and maybe his, de his birth date, you know, leaving the death date for somebody else to fill in. The stone was quarried somewhere in these, in these mountains locally. It's got um, oh, like crystals in it, little bits of crystal. And the story that Lois told me was that some years ago the lamb was vandalized. It was knocked over and that members of the family restored it. So my guess is these little metal ears, these little, almost like little spoons, may have been added by the family, believing, you know, that the, perhaps the lamb had stone ears that got knocked off. And he's got marbles, black marbles for eyes. And again, they may have been added when he was restored, or Mr. Mayberry may have put them on himself. It's got a little backdrop, a little support carved around the side. It's almost life size. I mean, I guess it is life size. A lamb could be a, could be this size. It's got little cloven hooves. The, the legs are bent back, and then this, you know, these wonderful ears that were inserted. And they may have been original. I don't. I don't know. But of all the lambs I've photographed, and I've been in oh hundreds of cemeteries now. Uh, this is a one of a kind, and it is because of the story and because of Lois talking about uh, her memory of Mr. Mayberry makes it all that much more special. I think my interest in preservation really goes way, way back. Uh, my grandmother was a history teacher, and family was extremely important to her, and so she made sure